um, yes, good morning uh, to Alison Melrose, headmistress at Prince's Garden Prep School in the heart of Kensington. I was just saying to some of our followers that you, you opened last September at the sort of height of the mad pandemic crisis. Uh, how, how's life? It's been very busy. Um, in, in all honesty, it's been very busy. It's been a bit of a whirlwind for the last couple of years. Yeah. And the last year has just been absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, we won a new building in September due to de the delays from the pandemic. And we finally got our children in here in January with our earliest children. And then, of course, um, in March, when the schools were allowed to open again, not only was it a return to school for our children, but it was a, a return to a brand new building. So it was incredibly exciting for everybody. Yeah, yeah so I bet. A full, a full induction morning um, so the children could find their new classrooms, go and explore all of the wonderful new spaces and just get settled back into being at school and being with groups of other people again, which mm. was really important to get those social skills and connections rolling absolutely absolutely and turning the clock back a little Alison uh, teaching and education are, are certainly in your blood I, I believe you grew up in a school with both your mother and grandmother teaching at the time um did you did you ever consider not going down the educational path well, that's funny. I mean, it is true. Both my, my mother and her mother before her were teachers. And this must have influenced my decision making behind the scenes somewhere. However, I don't recall having a sort of light bulb <laughs> moment. It all seemed very natural. I mean, yeah. I was very fortunate to go to one of the leading London girls day schools. Many of my friends and my peers were going off to study law and medicine and languages, <laughs> all sorts of things. And Education at the time did seem slightly unusual. However, they had a brilliant course back in the day at um, Durham University mm. where they combined your degree with your teaching qualifications. So you did your first couple of years within the university doing your BA or your BSc and your uh, teacher training in the university holidays. Mm. Everybody else was heading home or going on their travels. Some of us were still stuck there. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then the final two years were very much more education focused. Mm. Uh, and it, it was a brilliant, brilliant training ground, I have to say. Yeah. And you haven't looked back since. <laughs> busy, busy indeed. Absolutely. Um, I believe the, the original brief given to you for, for Prince's Garden Prep was to be the best London, the best prep school in London, um, which is quite a quite an accolade. Um, do you think you're on the path to achieving that, albeit in very early days? And what do you think sets you apart from such a competitive market? Absolutely. I mean, it is a, it is a bold statement indeed, is it not? Um, <laughs> in London, we are so incredibly fortunate to have so many fantastic schools for parents to choose from. Mm. Um, but we do feel that we are in a brilliant setting um, to start your school career. It's a large building. Um, you know, it's four grade two listed townhouses, six floors, as you saw from me sort of running yes. up and down the stairs. But it is very much a home away from home. The, the, the feeling of the building is a home away from home. And mm -hmm. um, we've got specialist teaching places, a plenty, two science labs, an art room, a huge maker space. Um, a beautiful, beautiful music room, plenty of music practice room, a gorgeous library. You know, I could just, I could just <laughs> get it on. So, for example, um, our science lab has gas taps in, and we had everybody from year four upwards last term learning how to light a Bunsen burner safely, because mm. we can extend our curriculum within our facilities safely for them to have all mm. those amazing learning experiences and it gives them just so much more enrichment to their classroom mm. but facilities are really very much only one part and at the heart of a school very much is the community this includes everyone from our staff and the teaching staff and the non-teaching staff our pupils our parents and also the people in our local community that we've made fantastic links with already mm. the staff have been so excited to work on this project it's not very often you have an opportunity to have a blank canvas and an opportunity for some fresh 
thinking. Um, and really we're focusing on using our location and using London as our classroom to enhance our curriculum and our teaching. Mm. Our locality, our proximity to the museums, within lessons you can pop down, go and see something for 10 minutes, and five minutes later be back in the classroom to really be able to bring learning to life. Mm. We've also been looking at our curriculum as to how we can develop for future skills. So preparation for 11 plus is so key here in London, absolutely a priority, whether it comes to the online assessments or school-based exams, but the interviews are also becoming much more crucial. Mm. They're looking for group dynamics, leadership skills. Do children have an opinion that they can share with others? So, you know, can they speak for themselves? Those, those the make space and some of our other facilities are brilliant for lending themselves to those sorts of activities. Mm. We've got the four C course, critical thinking, creativity, communication, collaboration. And are some of those spaces really lend themselves so well to those sorts of activities for learning? Mm. And I, I know what pressure you're under for, for um, selection to senior school. And that's absolutely you know, critical to your role. Um, it sounds a very sort of hackneyed question, but I mean, is there still time for children to be children? I know you've got you've got access to Hyde Park and you've got a lovely private garden, which I think is amazingly two acres in the middle of London. Um, but is there still time for them just to sort of be children? Very much so. I mean, you, you want children to be happy to come to school, um, to develop those social connections, make mm. life friends. And for a central London school, we are certainly blessed with access to open space. Sure. Uh, which has become increasingly important in everybody's minds, particularly following the pandemic. We use all the open spaces as much as possible. And what do they say? No such thing as bad weather, just appropriate clothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do the outside as much as possible, um, not just for break times, but incorporating the outdoors into our outdoor learning. So our younger children have forest school lessons and they rummage around in the garden and use that for literacy and number skills and humanities and all manner of different things. Mm. Um, but we also don't need to use buses. We don't need to drive the children anywhere. They can walk everywhere, which is amazing. Mm. So we've got Hyde Park, the sport or fixtures. We've got Imperial College's Ethos Sports Centre, which is next door but one, with their swimming pool and their sports centre. But mm. we've got a hidden benefit. Well. Mm. Oh, sorry, Alison, the connection has gone a bit glitchy. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you, yes. Oh, we've gone a bit slow again, I think. Yes, a little bit glitchy, our end. Can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Okay, we should get back on. Are you all right? <laughs> yeah no, we're fine we're fine technology so we, we were talking a little bit about the open space and the access to the gardens which we're just so lucky to have here absolutely mm. and we try and use it as much as possible absolutely and i have to say testament to, to how happy the children are to come to school when we had a quick chat yesterday i was absolutely amazed to hear that you are hosting super camps at school with a good proportion of current pupils <laughs> so they were coming to school on the holidays which is quite something it is, and they love it actually. And quite mm. often, I'll have their head; um, they'll pop their head around the door and go, "Oh, hello, Mrs. Laura." <laughs> Probably rather surprised to see you there as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes they're a little bit surprised to see me too. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, um, and I know it's it's all sort of slightly early days, but do you have an idea of where where you anticipate sending most people? Do they tend to stay within the London system, or do they go off to board, or what do you see as being a, the, the pattern? So the majority of families here very much are looking at London day schools and we support that transition very, very thoroughly. It's, you know, it's very much part of what we do. The mm. preparation for 11 plus is built into our curriculum with you know, reasoning, current affairs, um, interview practice, um, all, of the, all of the things that you would expect. We meet parents on a one-to-one -one basis. We also mm. have a 
talk with parents to explain about the different systems. And we've been hosting these fantastic Talking Heads events each term for parents, not just at our school, but at some of the other London Cognita schools as well. We've got three or four of the senior school heads will join us because we're also adept at video calls these days. And they'll talk a little bit about their schools, but also about how they are preparing young children for the future as well. Mm. Um, because you know, obviously the workplace is changing and it continues to change and what they are looking for and how their assessments are changing as well. And that's become incredibly popular because it gives access to the head teachers that you wouldn't norm ordinarily get. And yeah. we field all the questions through the chat function. Um, and that's something that we will definitely continue to mm. do. But really, it's really about what is right for each child. So sure. we'll have children going off to City, Godolphin, um, to the new school Maida Vale. Mm. as well as schools that are quite local to us, like Eaton Square, Upper and Kensington Park, um, but a huge range. Mm. We've got a little bit of interest in boarding. Um, you know, one of my sons is at boarding school, so I have personal experience of that. Mm. My other son is actually here at school with me, okay. which uh, is tricky for him and the staff, shall we say. But yes. <laughs> he loves it. He absolutely loves it. Oh. Um, so we have great links with all of the senior schools, whether they mm. are day or boarding, but okay. the majority of, of children do go off to London day schools. Okay. Um, and you mentioned, I was going to come on to actually being, being a part of a group of schools, the, the Cognita group. Um, what value added do you think there is for, for Prince's uh, Garden to be part of that group? Absolutely. Now, this is a question I'm, I'm often asked, and I, I really enjoy answering it because people can be wary of schools that are within groups. Yeah. Um, however, I would say that each school very much has its own flavour um, and individuality. And Cognita is a bit like a sort of supportive uncle behind the scenes. So we benefit from fantastic opportunities for networking, professional development, sharing best practice with staff and other schools. And it makes that so easy for us to link with other schools around the mm. world for children to help develop these global systems of the future. Mm. And as much as I hope that we don't end up with online learning again, we had great support from our central team at Cognita. All the schools within our group were so well equipped to deliver a brilliant online offer with a mixture of live and recorded lessons throughout each day. Wellbeing Wednesdays in conjunction with the team at Active Learning Group, who are also part of our umbrella group um, and much more. Mm. And as you were talking about earlier, you know, we've got super camps. They mm. come in. We also have some language schools that work with us as well. My youngest son is actually at Bushcraft this week on a residential trip where they were cooking their own burgers and making shelters. <laughs> this is all part of the Active Learning Group, which is part of our, you know, part of the Cognita group as well. Absolutely. So it's a balance, mm. but we have our, um, our own autonomy and um, uh, we can make our own decisions, but we do have the support and the background and the resources of a much larger school or group of schools behind us. Mm. And possibly as a new school, albeit with huge experience leading it, um, you know, it, it is quite a useful framework to be to be amongst, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we've been dealing with sort of English heritage and planners mm. and gardens and Imperial College. And actually to have colleagues that can help support us with this so that it doesn't take away from what we're doing with the children Absolutely. is a great benefit. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Um, being based in a, in a capital city as you are, there's obviously, a, 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 I would imagine, a large international um, contingent um, in your pupil body. How do you think this gives the, all the children a flavour or a snapshot of real life, possibly more so than, than schools that have less in, international influence? Um, absolutely. I mean, our, our parent body is very much families who've made London their home. Mm. Um, so this might mean you've been born and bred here or you may have chosen to settle here uh, for your family or your career or even for the education that's on offer. Um, and there's always going to be some element of transience within central London, but we look very much to our families who are going to join us at the very bottom of our school and go with us all the way through to the top mm. um, and come out at year six. British values are very important to us and they're part of our, a huge part of our curriculum. So we had a bagpiper on St Andrew's Day. <laughs> Everybody was brilliant. <laughs> the Royal College of Music, which is just across the road. Amazing. Um, we had some beautiful, beautiful horses who came to visit us from the Knightsbridge Barracks, which again is just down the road after yep. their morning exercises. 
And some of the children had never been so close to these horses before. And they were so well behaved. Um, so that's really important for us. But also we do embrace the international offer within our schools as well. Not just mm. our school, but within our group. So we link the classes, each with a class from, and now I need to get this right, Colegio Europeo de Madrid. Uh, I'm impressed. Spanish. <laughs> So the classes are linked with, with a class in Spain. So that's another okay. stop. And they get to know the children. The funniest thing was that they were interested in their school uniform, their classrooms, <laughs> and their styles, which was quite interesting. Oh. Um, but again, you know, that again, being part of a Bonita, we do have a global outlook and we learn and we celebrate different festivals. In the summer, we host an international day. The mm. children are dressed in national dress. Uh, whilst we couldn't celebrate with food this year, which is always the teacher's favourite part of it, when, <laughs> whenever there's food and something to eat, it's always, always brilliant. Um, but we had a lovely parade in our hidden garden and we invited the children from Imperial College's nursery and they came mm. out in bubbles to come and wave and cheer us on. And it was a lovely sort of experience to be able to share our school community with their school community as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't know what our children are going to be doing in the future, what languages they're going mm. to need to speak, where they're going to be live, but it is very much our responsibility to embrace this and support the development of these next generation of global citizens. Yeah, no, absolutely agreed. And Alison, where, where do you sit on selection, the selection process? Um, are, are do you, is there, is there a, um, a process that children go through to, to gain entry? Yes, we do. We do have an admissions process. Really, we're looking for children who will thrive for what we mm. have to, on, with what we have to offer. Mm. Um, we want children to be interested and engaged with all the different activities, the curriculum areas we have, the extracurricular sure. program, um, and to make sure that they're going to benefit from it. Mm. We talk about having a broad curriculum, so we want to make sure that people are happy with that. You know, if people want a school that focuses just on maths and English, they may be better going somewhere else. Mm. But we do want children who can access it, um, but also they, if they are coming in from abroad, they must have a good level of English to be able to come into the school. Absolutely. And is there a sibling policy? Do you encourage families and siblings? Very much so, as long as it is the right school for each child. Yeah. Much so. Yeah. so they would certainly have priority entry. If there were any specific needs that we felt that we just could not meet, we would um, support them in finding somewhere more appropriate. But in general, yes, we would very much support siblings and families being together. Yeah. OK, fantastic. Um, and Alison, you've had an amazing career um, in London, um, heading up and, and being involved with, um, you know, at London schools. Do you see, I mean, if you had a crystal ball, you've got a big challenge on your hands with a new school um, that will keep you occupied, I'm sure, in the short term. But do you, do you see um, a, a pathway for the next sort of five to ten years? Well, I was interesting because I was um, thinking about this. They're going to say, well, right, what, do you, what do you want to do in five years from now? And I thought, well, five years from now will still be the summer holiday. So I'm hoping to be somewhere exotic or lovely or exciting or interesting doing something with my family <laughs> five years from today in the middle of August. Um, but yes, I mean, this school yep. has definitely been quite a project and it's the sort of role that you really do need to commit to and see it through. Um, that's very important to me. Mm. I, I, I feel it's really important to have stability um, and have the school in a really strong, stable place before I think of moving on to my next exciting venture. Absolutely. And if, if there is a downtime or if you ever find, find time, um, I mean, clearly you're in school in the middle of August, so I, I'm not sure quite where this question's going. But what do you <laughs> like doing if, uh, if, if indeed you do find time to, to sort of relax and, and when you're not, when you haven't got your headmistress hat on? Absolutely. Well, everybody who knows me knows that one of my favourite things is to have a cup of tea and a piece of cake. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, and I have been so incredibly busy that I do like to spend time with my children and my husband, yeah. who I haven't spent much time with in the last couple of years. Absolutely. And because it has been such a big project, in this last year, I set myself a bit of a challenge. Um, so I think I felt I needed something else to slightly distract me. Um, so in a month from now, I am going to be doing my first triathlon. So I've been trying to keep it on the side. Wow. And I, um, 
I continue to loathe dark, murky water that's cold. <laughs> for and I don't think I'm ever going to like it. And I think I'm just going to have to pull on my big resilience pants again and just yeah. <clears throat> dive in, swim some breaststroke and get out and get on with the rest of it. I am deeply impressed on many levels, but I have to say that probably tops it. <laughs> Alison, thank you for your time this morning. A real insight to, to the excitements that have, have clearly um, still very much burning at, uh, at uh, your school and uh, really look forward to watching progress over the next few months. And perhaps we can have a catch up interview in about six months and see where, you're, where you are. That would be lovely. It's been so lovely to join you this morning. Uh, thank you very pleasure. much for having me. Absolute pleasure. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Bye.